I am Miki Saito, and I am so sorry for the confusion. <laughs> Actually, I had a hard time getting on uh, Wadsworth Public Library's Facebook page through from Zoom. So I decided to do it from my own Facebook page. I hope you are here because live music is starting right now. And I am performing contemporary and uh, traditional Japanese mu music today using beautiful uh, instruments such as koto and shinobue. So I hope you are here and I'm not talking to myself and stay tuned. All right. So, um, so I am going back to Zoom and my first song is called Kokirikobushi. And it is the oldest Japanese song that we have we know of, as of even right now. And it could be as old as 2,000 years old. I know Japan is really, really old, so, you know, it's always like thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago. So, and, uh, so what is a kokiriko? So kokiriko is a Japanese, old, old Japanese instrument. It's just a pair of two sticks, you know, one of those type of thing. And... Um, it's got to be old because you know, it could be as 2000 old. So now, today though, I am not using that instrument, but I am using another instrument called binzasara. So this is, this big old thing is binzasara. So I'm using this because this instrument is often used to accompany the song Kokiriko Bushi. So Kokiriko is an instrument and Bushi is a song. So um, now when I first got this, it came in the mail from Japan in a box, kind of like this way. And I was like, okay, you know, what, what do I do with this? It's like, okay, well, you know, like what, 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 what? So now, so I went on YouTube <laughs> And so the masters do this thing, and it's this way, and you know, it's actually really hard. I actually practice it every day because you need like arm strength, you need a snap, and then you need to use core. So I'm like lunging and stuff when I do this. And so um, I'm going to be using this, and I recorded a karaoke version of this so that I can concentrate on singing and doing this. So this is Kokirikobushi. And since I am social distancing, I am my own crew, so please bear with me.
Okay. I am back. So, my next song is called Uchi de Odoro. So, Uchi de Odoro means let's dance in the house. So, this actually originated in a video, uh, Hoshino Gen, uh, Gen Hoshino, I should say. Uh, created he's a japanese singer songwriter and he created in the uh, beginning of the pandemic a song or video on instagram saying hey let's stay home right now but we can still collaborate and then when this is over when we can be together again healthy so um he urged all the creative people to collaborate with his video either doing a dance to it or sing to it or do a cover so my cousin Jury told me about this and it has it had become a movement at that point. So I say, hey, I want to be a part of this. So I created a video or actually recorded the music, the cover of his song and uh, created a video for Instagram, which is so both of our uh, videos that I'm going to show is going to be nine, uh, 59 seconds each because that's the maximum length of video that Instagram allows. So this is Uchi de Odoro by Hoshino Gen and my cover. Oh, okay, so when I <laughs> when I show the video, um, it, there will be a few seconds of black screen with my name on it. And I know like people were wondering <laughs> like, enough about my video, I mean, my uh, broadcast today, but you will have like five seconds of like silence. That doesn't mean I went away again, <laughs> but uh, it's just, I'm switching. So the video will come. Enjoy. たまに重なり合うような僕らとびあとじれば明日が生まれるなら遊ぼう一緒に内で踊ろう一人踊ろう変わらぬ鼓動弾ませろよ生きて踊ろう僕らそれぞれ場所で重なり合うよ内で歌おう悲しみの向こう全ての歌で手をつなごう生きてまた会おう僕らそれぞれの場所で重なり合えそうだ Next song is uh, actually a video of uh, Koto introduction. So I wanted to uh, create a video for this because I wanted to get the best quality for uh, audio quality. And I've tried different things and pre-recorded video was my best bet on audio quality. So also I wanted to show my hands and strings and close up of that uh, instrument. So I made a video and I would like to uh, thank 
all the people who helped me get into this traditional Japanese music, uh, Miwa Morita-san, who plays shamisen, also uh, Yuko Eguchi-san, who knows everything about Japanese traditional music, uh, and also Tamiko Iida-san, they're both in Pittsburgh, uh, who is a koto master. So thank you so much. Without you, your help, I don't have this program. So this is koto introduction video. The koto is the national instrument of Japan. It was introduced to Japan from China about 1300 years ago in the 7th century. It is made of palona wood and is about 6 feet long. It is a large instrument but weighs only 12 pounds because it is hollow inside which gives this instrument a beautiful resonance. Movable bridges, called G, are used to tune the strings. This is how I tune my koto to a popular traditional tuning called hirajoshi. Once you tune the koto, you're basically stuck with these 13 pitches for the entire piece of music. Although you can raise the pitch by a half a whole step by pressing the string with your left hand. But that's about all the pitch alterations you can make. This is very different from an instrument like guitar. With guitar, you tune the guitar to a specific set of pitches. Then you use your left hand to create many different pitch combinations to create a variety of pitches and harmonies. This is not possible with koto. Another difference between koto and guitar in terms of tuning is that with guitar you generally do not change the tuning for each song. But for koto, each song specifies which tuning you need to use for the piece as a composer, koto is a challenging instrument to compose for since I basically have only 13 pitches to play with. I've been a pianist all my life and I'm used to having 88 pitches at all times, not 13. I always wondered why so many Japanese old tunes sound similar and now I know why. Because there were only 13 pitches to choose from for the whole entire piece. And they were using only like a few tuning systems that were only slightly different from each other. Just listen to these old Japanese tunes. Don't they all sound alike? strings are plucked using three finger picks called tsume, worn on the first three fingers of the right hand. Since only three fingers are used instead of ten fingers like for piano, it is difficult for a koto to create thick sound by itself, making koto a very popular ensemble instrument. But I also really love hearing koto played solo with its simplicity and the space each sound creates. I'm very much a beginner and a hard 
hardest thing for me is to control the finger picks. The tsume. I don't know how many times I've messed up because my tsume is sliding on the string, slipping down from the string and stabbing my koto body. We're getting stuck on a string and I'm late playing the next note. And another thing about koto is that the 13 strings look all the same. The piano has sets of two black keys and sets of three black keys. How in the world would I know which one is a ninth string exactly? I won't have the time to be counting strings in the middle of a tune like, okay, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. However, I did manage to capture a take that did not contain any obviously hideous mistakes. So please allow me to share it with you. I hope you'll enjoy it. So All right, so my next song is live music again, and this is called Itoshi no Eri. So this was released in 1979, and 79. And if you were in Japan in 1979 and even like 80s, you sh I think you know every word of this song. So please sing along. Uh, it's written by uh, Keisuke Kuwata, and uh, it was actually covered 10 years later by Ray Charles. So this is Itoshi no Eri.
Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> so this next song is called Sora Boshie. All right, I'm the only one in this house doing this. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so uh, Soran Bushi is a folk tune, and I recorded it with uh, my uh, help of my friends who did the Japanese shout like, and stuff like that at home, and they sent the recording of that, and so I put everything together. Then, so I, I did the recording, and then I asked my friends on Facebook too, and, but personally, mostly, to do something with that audio, like do like, you know, dance or something. So that is, so I got lots of videos. Thank you so much for people who helped me with this, this huge collaboration project. And so I'm really, really excited to premiere this thing. So uh, I want to thank really all of it, all of you guys right now. And so this is Sorambushi. Okay, so, so what is Sorambushi? So Sorambushi is actually uh, originated in Hokkaido by, uh, sung by fishermen. So when they take the fish in, in the big nets, they would just say, you know, Soran, Soran. So that's how it started. Like he, ho, that, that type of thing. So that's, the whole song is is that kind of thing, and now it's really popular a folk song. All right, so this is Sodambushi. Enjoy. Yaren, so, 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 so
Okay. Thank you, everyone. Loved it. Okay. So anyway, so next up, I would like to introduce Taiko. Taiko, Taiko. All right. <laughs> so Taiko is a Japanese drum, and and I actually have one right here. This big old thing. And this, there are different kinds of taiko, many. But this is called Katsugi Oke Daiko. So literally, I got this this week. Oh, I should say last week now. But um, so what does Katsugi mean? Literally, this is Katsugi. Carry with you. So, oh, this way. Okay, so this is a very popular taiko amongst young people right now. And <laughs> so it's very virtual. I mean, not virtual, versatile. <laughs> yes, this is virtual. Okay, so um, I have one drum head. And then you have another one. This actually one, this is new, and they pretty much sound the same to me, but it should be a different tone, and it is, as I play it more, it should become different. So two tones, plus, you can, I'm sure you can do this, and this, so it's very versatile, and um, you can actually dance with it, run with it, that's why, you know, the young people already get, in, get into this, so it's very visual as well. So it's a wonderful taiko, and I would like you to see live performance uh, performances of taiko right here in Northeast Ohio. So I'm gonna put this back. Actually, that taiko is not that heavy. Like so, like 12 pounds maybe. So katsugi means carry, and oke means tug, like a container, and Taiko is, Daiko is Taiko. So what I was saying is you can actually see live Taiko performances by uh, Yume Daiko, which is a Taiko group right here in Ohio. Strongsville, Strongsville, Ohio, right there actually from my house. So they are fantastic. They do local performances. So please go see them and get to know Taiko. It's really, really exciting. All right, so um, now next up, uh, I'd like to play a piece called Shinnen. And Shinnen means strong belief. Um, and actually, so this is my own composition. And I composed this thinking about maybe this music might be good for like movie trailers. And nowadays, they do not hire like orchestra real orchestra or something for movie trailer. It's all virtually made, meaning you play the keyboard and then the sound of violin comes and all that stuff. So everything is just made in studio. So I composed this and made this recording at my house. Then I put clips of Akira Kurosawa's movies. I got them in, from YouTube. And I just put the, those clips over my composition. So uh, this is Shine. Enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so that was Shinnen. So next up, I am performing a song from the anime Naruto. I love Naruto because uh, they, Naruto has really great music. Um, so this, I made a karaoke track and uh, I will be, it'll be karaoke except for Shinobue in the beginning and the piano, especially at the end, the piano, uh, end of uh, this song, the piano. Um, so when I make my own recording of something else, I try to make my own arrangement, kind of make it my you know, own music. But for this one, I try to copy as, you know, I, I, I wanted this to sound as authentic Naruto version as possible because I just love this music. So this is Naruto. It's called Sadness and Sorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So, next up, I'd like to talk about Shinobue, the very instrument I just started that Naruto song with. Um, you know, I'm Japanese. I grew up in Japan. I left when I was 20 years old. So I graduated from Japanese schools and everything. But, and so I, you know, I could, I wish I could say like, yeah, I've been playing Shinobi all my life. And, and I've been playing the Koto for 10 years or something like that. But no, not at all. <laughs> I got the Shinobi 
two months ago, and I got the koto a month and a half ago. So uh, I'm so grateful that I could even play today. But um, so Shinobue, uh, learning how to play Shinobue has been an adventure. And plus, <laughs> so Shinobue is an extremely hard instrument to play. So like first few days that I got Shinobue, it was kind of like, <laughs> it was like that for days. So, and then to make the matter more complicated for a beginner, um, this says eight. And this says, for example, six in Japanese. So what does that mean? So this means this shinobue is for C major. This shinobue is for B major, a B flat major, I'm sorry, B flat major. So basically every key that you play, you have to learn the new shinobue. And then you might think like, oh, you know, they look similar enough. And no, they are not. They're not like, okay. So yeah, the length is different. The whole sizes and then, you know, the, the, the placement different. So, you know, so it's kind of complicated. So, so you have to get used to it, but make the matter even more complicated though. That, so you think that if it's a C major, the same kind, you know, they're both C major right here, you know? Okay. So then you would think they're the same. They're not. How could they be different? Okay. So if I put the same mouthful right here, they're sl ever s slightly different. They might, you might think, yeah, it's close enough. It's not because even if you are like one millimeter off, one millimeter, I'm so Japanese right now. One millimeter off, <laughs> it won't sound, you know, like, like that. I can't be doing that in the middle of a song. So, and so that, you know, basically what it is, is every Shinobue is unique. So this is a very primitive instrument. So basically this is a bamboo stick and they took the inside part out and they put holes. That's it. So very primitive. And I think that's one of the reasons why I like this instrument so much, even though this is so difficult because it's so primitive and it's close to nature. It sounds so simple and just reminds me of this, you know, like Japanese countryside or something. It, it just, I just love it. But, um, but nonetheless, it's extremely finicky. Uh, because it's so primitive. So, you know, that I was researching and then I read some, you know, people say like, well, you have to meet the right one. <laughs> you have to find the compatible shinobue for you because your mouth shape is different, your teeth shape are different, you, the way you blow the air is different. So you have to, you know, get uh, meet the right one. But okay. How can I meet the right Shinobue if I'm just ordering online from United States? You know, like, it's not like, I just have to, re you know, take whatever they gave me on, on, in the mail. And even if I was in Japan and if I go to the store, can I, do you think I, I can try it? Like, okay, well, let me just, you know, play this, you know, put in my, you know, like breath and everything. And then say, oh, you know what? I don't like this. Can I see another one? No, of course not. I mean, especially during this pandemic, there's no way. So basically you have to adjust to whatever the Shinobue you got. Now, this is a commitment. You know, this is actually expensive. This one is like $200 plus. Now this one, a lot cheaper, but it doesn't sound as good as this one. So when I buy, a shinobue, it's a commitment. It's, but it's kind of like marrying a person without meeting a person. You know, hopefully I'll be compatible. <laughs> or like, if this is not compatible to me, I will have to adjust. No, my gosh. Anyway, 
and to for me to make the matter even more complicated um after like three four days uh of practicing faithfully like hours on end not, not on end but a lot i start to itch like right here and i'm like what's going on and it got worse and worse like i start to swell and everything like get red and swell and like uh, my lower lip start to get fuller i'm like you know at first i'm like oh, maybe this is a good look for me no it wasn't it was hideous so and so i started to research and found out that some people like me uh can be allergic to the lacquer uh of the shinobue of, of shinobue so the lacquer is called urushi and so i was thinking you know what is urushi then you know what am i allergic to and so i literally went to google translate you know japanese urushi english hit enter and he said poison ivy poison ivy can you believe this this is covered with poison ivy and i am so allergic to poison ivy you know i love disc golfing but even if it's like 95 degree weather i wear pants when i'm disc golfing because i love disc golfing but i i suck at it so my disc will go into the woods and everything so i'm finding you know looking for my disc and everything so i wear pants all the time because i am that allergic to poison ivy so it just blew my mind that um, i mean i was thinking like who would put this like who make who would make urushi like aren't you allergic to poison ivy but i guess you know there are people who are not allergic to poison ivy and so i was really really sad that I, I love this shinobu. I was, you know, falling in love with this instrument, and now I was allergic allergic to it. So my uh, solution was: even if I played five minutes, I would wash this area with this thing, poison ivy oil remover, and I can attest that this product works because i've been fine since day so thank you and they didn't pay me for this so anyway so this is that was my shinobu intro and i would like to play uh princess mononoke's theme song you know i love uh ghibli and really i shouldn't be playing this wonderful wonderful song and ruin it because i've been playing only two months but i would like to play it i actually videotaped it i can't i can't do that live like i can't take my chance this so but i'd like to thank my shinobue teacher from bottom of my heart uh takei makoto sensei um he has been he sees me every week via skype and he's been he's a wonderful teacher a wonderful person and he's actually the person who played in ghibli princess monoke soundtrack so so he coached me with this i feeling like, like i'm not worthy but anyway he he was happy to do it and thank you so much so this is princess mononoke uh me playing the shinobu wife
Okay, so I am back and this is my last song. I know I'm, I'm sorry that uh, I, we had the fusion in the beginning, so I had to uh, uh, kind of cut some of the songs. But this is my last song and I have an opera, Japanese opera that I've been uh, writing for like last two years. <laughs> And this is one of the songs, it's called Hana Song. And I just want to thank you for tuning in today. And I'd like to wrap this wonderful event up in Japanese style. So there is a thing called Sanbonjime. So that is actually when, you know, they have like a wedding or get together or something. They, oh, everybody does this rhythm pattern. So. Now, for Sanbonjime, you do that three times. So that is to kind of celebrate uh, this um, successful completion of an event or just putting hearts together at the end. So I would like to play uh, Hana song live. Uh, this is um, the festive version of this uh, piece. And I'd like to play like some of the song, uh, instruments that I uh, introduced today. And um, then after the song, we'll do this thing. All right, Hana song. Please give me your hands. Yo! Yo! Moicho! Domo, arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you so much for being together today. Thank you so much, and I will see you soon. Bye!